Question number 171. Saliva performs a number of important functions. In this context, xerostomia due to decreased salivary secretion will lead to optimum solubilization of contents of food, increased incidence of dental caries, appreciation of taste, enhanced cleanliness of mouth and teeth. In the question, a condition is stated termed as xerostomia. The word xerostomia itself means dry mouth and this is due to the decreased salivary flow in the mouth. The saliva acts as a lubricating agent and also solubilizes the contents of the food. It's also a cleanser and maintains cleanliness and hygiene in the oral cavity or buccal cavity. It contains lysozyme which provides protection against bacteria. In the absence of enough saliva, the bacterial load in the oral cavity can increase and problems such as dental caries or cavities can occur. It also has a role in taste appreciation. In the given options, option 1 is correct, option 2 and 3 as well. But option 4 says that the cleanliness would be enhanced. This is incorrect. When the salivary flow is reduced, the cleanliness would also decrease. Thus, the correct answer would be option number 4 because this will not occur when there is xerostomia. Correct answer is 4. Question number 172. Among following fat digestion maximally occurs in mouth, stomach, duodenum, colon. The enzymes that are essential for fat digestion are lipases. These lipases could be lingual lipases, gastric lipases or pancreatic lipases. Lingual lipase is present in mouth gastric lipase in stomach and pancreatic lipases are secreted by pancreas. So among the following options fat digestion maximally occurs in small intestine. Let's look at the options now mouth, stomach, duodenum, colon. Colon does not have any lipases and duodenum is the C-shaped part of small intestine. The correct answer would be option number 3, duodenum. Question 173. Select the option which is not true for inspiration in humans. It is a passive process. Contraction of inspiratory muscles increases thoracic volume. The pleural fluid prevents friction between surfaces during inspiration. Sternum is pushed outwards and upwards during inspiration. What is not true for inspiration has been asked. Let's look at option number one that it is a passive process is incorrect. Inspiration is an active process in humans. So this is incorrect. Option number two contraction of inspiratory muscles increases the thoracic volume. This is a true statement. The muscles such as diaphragm when contracted during inspiration that would result in increased volume of the thoracic chamber. So this is a correct statement. Option number three, the pleural fluid prevents friction between surfaces during inspiration. The pleural fluid is present between pleura and pleura is a double walled membrane. The inner membrane is called as visceral pleura and the outer membrane is called as parietal pleura and this fluid prevents friction between these two membranes during respiratory movement so this is also a right statement option number four sternum is pushed outwards and upwards during inspiration this is also a correct statement the pushing of sternum outward and upwards increases the thoracic volume due to which the pressure in the thoracic cavity decreases and the outside air is forced inside during inspiration. The incorrect statement here is option number one and that is our answer. Question 174. A decrease in O2 affinity of hemoglobin due to rise in PCO2 at tissue level is termed as Bohr's effect, Haldane's effect, Hamburger's phenomenon, 
chloride shift. Let's try to understand what happens at the tissue level. At the tissue level where the tissues are actively metabolizing, the PCO2 is higher. That is the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide is higher because carbon dioxide is being released as a product of metabolic process and because of higher PCO2 the CO2 diffuses from tissues into blood. At the tissue level where PCO2 is higher the affinity of hemoglobin for O2 decreases resulting in the dissociation of O2 from hemoglobin. Thus O2 from blood diffuses into tissues and this phenomenon is known as Bohr's effect wherein the O2 is diffusing into the tissue from the blood because of higher PCO2 at the tissue level. Let's read the question again a decrease in O2 affinity of hemoglobin due to rise in PCO2 at the tissue level is termed as Bohr's effect. Let's look at the other options now. Option number two, Haldane's effect occurs at the lung level, whereas the chloride shift or Hamburger's phenomenon is related to the exchange of bicarbonate and chloride ions at the membrane of RBCs. The correct answer is one, Bohr's effect. Question 175, the receptors present in carotid and aortic bodies are stimulated by rise in PO2, rise in PCO2, fall in H plus concentration, fall in 2,3 dpg content. The receptors which are present in the carotid and aortic bodies are termed as chemoreceptors and these receptors are very sensitive to the concentration of CO2 and H plus ions in the blood. So a rise in the level of CO2 and hydrogen ion concentration can lead to sending of impulses to respiratory center by these chemoreceptors. These chemoreceptors are particularly sensitive to the levels of CO2 and hydrogen ions and a rise or fall in the levels of O2 or 2,3 dpg has no significant effect on them. Thus in the given options the rise in PCO2 would be the correct answer and since these chemoreceptors are stimulated due to rise in H plus concentration, option 3 would be incorrect. The correct answer here is option number 